Welcome everybody to another episode of Hidden in Universal Vol. I'm Ryan, your host. Well, I thought we'd go ahead this time to take a look at a drama. This is a drama that was made by DreamWorks, co-produced by Universal. We got Robert Downey Jr., Jamie Foxx, and 2009's The Soloist. The Soloist was, again, made in 2009, and the film focused on Robert Downey Jr., who plays Steve, Steve Lopez. He's a writer. He is basically a com, co, columnist at the Los Angeles Times till he goes bike riding. This is at the beginning of the film. He goes bike riding and he meet and he acts, he trips and conks his head on the pavement. So he's rushed to the hospital and then as soon as he gets out of the hospital, he's working at the LA Times along with his boss, played by Stephen Root. Uh, alongside with his wife, who's also his boss, played by the wonderful Catherine Keener, who's just really good. So, he meets, late in mid for the beginning of the film, like I said, he got out of the hospital, so during, during his, either his lunch break or he's done with his shift, he meets up with Jamie Foxx, who plays Nathan Alloway, I think his name is. He's a guy who was a disabled, he was a disabled man, who has schizophrenia, but he was actually once a student at Juilliard School in Los Angeles. The movie takes place in 2005 in Los Angeles, obviously. So, he has this thing where he remembers a lot of things. Sort of like Rain Man, but not really Rain Man. If you've seen the movie Rain Man, you'll know what I'm talking about. So, he gets him that, he helps him out though, through, and this begins a long-term friendship. So he's like, he wants him to shake his hand like that to get him a long-term job. Not a real long-term job, but to shake hands and they begin a friendship. That's the main gist of what The Soloist is about. The movie is, I'm just going to tell you right now, a muckin' masterpiece. You want to talk about a great movie. It is so good. This movie, I'm going to tell you right now, will make it on my top list of the best films. It's early, but this is a contending, contender to be in my top list of what I watched for this channel. It is really good. Catherine Keener is great. A, gr a good supporting cast. The movie is directed by Joe Wright. I have covered a couple of his films on there. I got two more movies I own of his work, so I'm going to cover them eventually. But I thought we'd go ahead and take a look at Soloist. And the Soloist was his first attempt at doing a film set in modern day Los Angeles. And Joe Wright said in the featurette that he's not familiar with America yet, but he wanted to make a movie that centers around America. This movie deals a lot of the homelessness. Now, I'm watching this movie, I realized there are some moments I was tearing up. There were some moments I didn't understand. Like, I didn't understand the trippy color scenes. That might be the only complaint I have. There's also one scene near mid through the film, or near near the mid tailway into the film, where he's, like, wearing American flag colors. He, like, has face paint on. So that that's, like, really weird. And he has, like, a sort of... American hat, that's also kind of weird. The movie in a whole is just, if you can get over those parts, The Soloist is a great movie. And, you're trying to think of some other moments though. He actually gets, he actually gets the job. So, he gives him a cello, and he starts playing it, and it's just totally mesmerizing. So he has to take the cello, he just gets very scary. He's like very picky, he's like trying to yank that cello and it's like I gotta keep it. It's like no you're not playing in this dangerous street. I, I need it now. So he kept like grabbing it. He finally grabs it, put it in the trunk, says meet me in a certain area and you can play more of it. So he goes to the, so he goes and he records all these homeless people. He meets more homeless people there and it's crazy because mid near almost near the beginning of the film we'll see him as a young man and he wasn't like that when he was a child so when he was a kid growing up, he was that good playing it. He was a simple young man. He didn't become homeless until he got to adulthood. And they do explain it, but not going to give away much of the film. But whew, 
wow, is this great. Again, like I said, I almost literally start being in tears with this film. And it's just, wow. If you want to talk about a film, this is probably Jamie Foxx's best, best performance. I want to say this is right up there with Collateral in terms of the best work. And if you, also another one that I kind of consider, also like The Kingdom. The Kingdom was another movie that was a really good Jamie Foxx role. But I mean, Jamie Foxx can play anything. Him with an instrument, he can play anything with an instrument. And he's just really good. Robert Downey Jr. is incredible. The whole cast, like I said, Catherine Keener was great. Um, yeah, it's a really, really touching, heartwarming story. That's how I will say about the film. But like I said, he, he decides he's going to play Robert Downey Jr.'s character, Stephen Lopez. He wants to try to get him into the harmonics because he's that good. But he goes and performs, and then he just gets schizo, and then he freaks out over him, saying, Get out now, we are no longer friends. Get out, or I will cut you like a dog. And he literally just runs out the door, like, freaked out. That's how much schizophrenia, and I'm going to say this right now, schizophrenia is a disease. It's a really sad disease. It's almost like that. It's... It's sad, and then he does the, the Lord's blessing, the, the Lord's uh, prayer. The, you know, Thou Father, heaven I come, give this Lord our daily bread. So he goes and speaks about it, so he can, like I said, it's, it's really sad at times. But, I talk about the movie a lot, just mentioning, the ending gives you a prologue, and... There's some shots, really good shots of, like I said, there's a scene where the camera picks up and you can see like a bunch of birds and you can hear like the music. Really beautiful scene and shows you what L.A. looks like. But there are times that it's just crazy. So, we'll get the Paul log. We're not going to give away much of it. I think I rambled too long and long. So, do I really need, need to do a final verdict? <sighs> I guess. So the final verdict is, you must absolutely see The Soloist. The Soloist is a proud, prime example of a masterpiece. I guess I'll do a little bit of an unboxing. Now, another problem I have, I'm not a fan of the cover. I don't know, it just, it didn't look, it didn't really, it didn't really sell me on it. But as you can see, this was released by Paramount. But this is not a Paramount movie. This is actually a DreamWorks film alongside Universal. Even though, but I think Paramount had the distribution rights to it. And unfortunately, just like the artwork I'm not a fan of, the discard is just your plain Jane. Paramount does that nowadays when they'll do silver or clear disc. They don't have much of discard. But if you're talking about special features, the special features on here, and the only one I watched was an unlikely friendship, the making of the soloists, deleted scenes, a commentary by Joe Wright, which I'll plan to watch the commentary to get more of it and, and more. I've got to mention all the people that were involved with the film, not just Joe Wright. The screen, it was based on a book by Steve Lopez. It was written by Susanna Grunt, wrote this. I'm probably going to get it wrong. Gary Forster and Russ Kensinoff produced this film with Tim Bavian, Eric Fellin, Patricia Wencher, and Jeff Skull, I'm probably pronounced butchering them names right. They were the executive producer, and wow, like I said, uh, I don't see anybody else I know. But it, oh, participation media made this movie as well. So I think I went on that long, and I, the blurbs on here says two of the year's best performances: Peter Travers, Rolling Stone, and Powerful, Inspiring by Sean Edwards of Fox TV. So yeah, overall, like I said, I think I said the final verdict already, but I'm going to say this again. You absolutely must see The Soloist. It is probably by far, and like I said, it'll make it on my ears. It's early, but it's there in my ears' best films. So I know, I know this is on too long. I don't want to spend more than that much minutes, but that's my review of The Soloist. 
Thank you so much for watching this review. If you like what you see, check out my playlist of some of my other stuff. Uh, so like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, do all that stuff. And until then, keep Universal in your mind and just go watch Universal movies. So I think that's all I'm going to say. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.